Welcome to the After Dark Podcast with Anthony James and Conrad. This is an extra episode for your YouTube comments because Anthony James and Conrad could not stop rambling on. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Hello and welcome to the After Dark Podcast. I'm Anthony James and that's Conrad. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I like lingered on that one a little bit longer than usual, just to give it a little extra sauce. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. <laughs> that that point, that that time, I really made sure to say how are you because I thought you were going to go the Ikbindu again. I was thinking about it. Just do that at the beginning of every episode from Ikbindu. now on. Ikbindu. <laughs> um, yes, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing absolutely brilliantly. Absolutely brilliantly. Um, I've got my wish. And uh, which is that? Oh, uh, I haven't even told you this off the air yet, but uh, our school <laughs> is closing for an extra week uh, over the over the over the October Halloween holidays. Is that COVID related? It is, but I'm delighted because I I like the idea of the disease stopping to spread. <laughs> you know, stopping spreading. Yeah, that'd be good. So that that'd be nice. That'd be nice and good. But um, it also means that I get to distance learn with my pupils next week. Although the government has actually said that it's an extended break, so telling the pupils that I was going to be giving them work didn't go very well but, <laughs> yeah. um, they got exams to do so you know <laughs> got to keep uh, their little brains whirring away yeah we don't, of course of course anyway we got lots of questions today I think we've got like something like 15 questions so we probably get nice. we probably better get into this pretty quick okay let's do it A stranger from the outside <sighs> question one comes from MH. This question has been bugging me forever. So maybe yeah. you guys can help me with it. How? What's the deal with airline food? Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we should get more questions like that. Someone write that question in next week. Yeah, please, please, please. We, we, can, we can talk about that for years. Sorry, MH, I apologize. I've interrupted your question. So MH says, when, how, and why did Adam break into the art museum and steal Ruben's Fall of the Dam painting? Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, it's uh, uh, Peter Paul Rubens. Pe- I think it's Peter Paul Rubens. Uh, and it's uh, Fall of the Damned, yeah. Well, let's say... I mean, I-, I actually forgot to say this on the main episode, so I'm going to say it now, and then I'll have to remember to do it uh, next week. Also, as a brief aside, another thing I forgot to do on the main episode, which this is, this is bec- like becoming a growing list that makes us seem very unprofessional. I forgot to say that I checked and uh, Noah does say that he took in, or oh, oh, um, uh, it is confirmed that he says, oh, he took you in and named you Noah. So that puts the Noah Roselli's dad theory out the window. Um, mm. And then I was going to say in this episode that the kind of layout of the lower chamber for the Sigmunda skies looks a lot like Petra and it looks like it's kind of designed in such a way that it's it's implied that it's like thousands of years old uh you know really really like kind of nails down their mastery of time and with that in mind I would say is it not possible that Adam went forward to the future and took it from there oh like time is a squared circle well, I mean, you know, the painting, well, yeah. But I mean, the painting presumably still exists in 2052. That's true. That's so, true, yeah. Know, uh, hopefully no one's nuking art galleries in the post-apocalyptic future. Yeah. So could he not just go to, I, I, I don't know where that painting even is. Um, but, um, you know, he pops over there in 2052, grabs it, comes back to 1921, and Bob's your uncle. Yeah. Bob's and now he's created a bootstrap paradox because... <laughs> the painting exists before it was painted or something i don't know when did you say it was painted well that's not a bootstrap paradox because well, that's not what happens with the book isn't it no a bootstrap paradox would be if he took it back to rubens and said here paint this <laughs> well i don't know when rubens painted it yeah no, it but before, it's only it a boot, it's, but it's only a bootstrap paradox if he took it and showed it to rubens and rubens painted it so therefore the right. painting never had a start but it's not a it's not a, it's not a bootstrap paradox if you just took it into the past and then it lived again through the same time or yeah but he might do he yeah, might you might, yeah. To Paul Rubens. Yeah, sorry, like, sorry, sorry. I should, I should have said season three spoilers there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay. Paul Rubens is going to become. A, I don't even know if Paul Rubens. Paul Rubens is a guy who played Pee Wee Herman. I think. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I think it's Peter Paul. Peter Paul ah, Rubens. Peter Paul Rubens. I'm just going to call him Paul Rubens and expose my absolute lack of any knowledge re- relating to art. 
Yeah, but isn't isn't that also a saying like robbed Peter to pay Paul? So there yes. you go. There you go. <laughs> robbed Peter in the future to pay <laughs> Paul in the past. I tell you what, we're really putting these pop shields through their faces and this <laughs> Yeah <laughs> this alliterative question answer. So I'm sorry everyone. This is awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hope that uh, I'm sure uh, MH is happy with that answer. I mean, we think we solved it. I think we solved it. <laughs> oh, so, happy to be a help. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, MH goes on and says, for some reason, I think it would be a print. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be a print, print or a replica. I mean, look at those fancy out underground headquarters of Sigmundus. Adam seems to <laughs> seems to like it expensive. Oh yeah, that's the real. That that interior is plush. You don't carve a kind of, you know, Greco-Roman looking temple facade into the side of a bloody <laughs> mountain just, you know, for like easily. Like that takes a lot of work. So yeah, they're definitely he's spending the big bucks on on his yeah. office. He may as well be in Doctor Evil's head on the side of a mountain. <laughs> yeah, there's a there is a room with uh, sharks with lasers on their heads just <laughs> out of shots in yeah. uh, the scene with Jonas. Adam's just like freaking lasers. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, I think uh, an MH always says, by the way, how did he, how on earth did he get that rich? I don't know if it's insinuated that Adam is actually rich. Is it like well, his, suit, mean, his suit looks like a nice suit, I suppose. You, you don't necessarily need to be rich if you have control of time, but I mean, you know, yeah. maybe he went the Biff Tannen route. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like sports almanac. Yeah, sports almanac. And that's uh, okay because it was always predetermined to happen in this world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Germany were always going to win the 2016 World Cup, so <laughs> like, it doesn't matter if he bets on it or not. Um, yeah, that's that's that. In my head, Adam is now the Biff Tannen. I can't remember who we initially theorized was the Biff Tannen of Dark, but I I've settled on it being th- Adam I now. Yeah, I don't know if we had a Biff Tannen actually. Well, well, yeah, yeah he's. He is kind of like the old Biff Tannen, actually. Yeah. Actually, on on a side note on Adam, actually, this is just, <laughs> this is this is us just randomly talking here now, but uh, that's what a podcast is, I suppose. But <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you know, uh, the actor who plays Adam, right? Now, don't Google this yet because you still might see a spoiler. I might find a picture and send it to you uh, privately, just so you don't actually have to Google it. But the, if you get a sideways, like the the three actors who play the three Eunices, yeah. um, they without Adam's makeup on. Uh, like they actually look all similar. Like the actor who plays Adam actually looks like them too. That's awesome. I could see them doing the work for that. Yeah. They do it for everyone else. So it doesn't surprise me in the slightest that they that they put the effort in for that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, and MH goes on. Uh, yeah, Egon was most definitely not a great investigator, but why not give the poor guy some credit for actually finding the creator album even uh, from just having one line of the lyrics without Google? I mean, that's impressive. That is true, actually. Yeah, I wonder what he did. I like to imagine Egon was kind of like phoning into local radio stations, being like, hello, I'd like to have a conversation about lyrics, and then like asking people to tell him what the band is. Or maybe he was just listening to loads of, of wait, what kind of metal was it? Is it thrash metal or is it death metal? I think I'm it's not, I'm not even going to try and guess because last, well, last time I said it was rock. <laughs> People, yeah, rock. people jump jump down my head. My throat Revealing at that. yourself to be the the boomer that you are. Like, yeah. Everything rock. You mean rock. you mean Elvis? You know. Yeah, those Beatles are too loud for me. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think it's death metal that someone told us it was. I'm sorry, I'm not very good on my my subgenres of metal, but um, yeah, he, he he was like listening to loads and loads of metal radio stations to find. I thought it, it was that's stainless steel, isn't it? I think that's what it is. <laughs> boo, boo that joke. But basically, right. Um, I, I've got an answer for this, and um, MH, you might not want to Im- <coughs> admit Excuse this. Me. You might not want to admit this to yourself, MH, but this is the answer. I'm sorry, I'm just telling you. We've already seen Egon walk into Ulrich's room uninvited once. Oh, you're saying he stole it? He just walked in and took it. I mean, Ulrich's not using it, is he? Maybe. He's, oh, well, he probably was using it in the 80s. Yeah, that's what I mean. He walked in. Ulrich was still playing his video games. And, yeah, playing uh, his Atari or whatever it was he was playing. Yeah, and uh, or he just snuck it. No, or he got to snuck in and took it and ran away. That's what I think. I could see him doing it. I could certainly see him doing it. Confiscating yeah. it for evidence in the Katarina case. <laughs> Burst in with his gun. Police business! <laughs> <laughs> he grabs a sheep's head full yeah. of drugs. And a, just uh, what they called? I can't remember. A creator. That's it. Creator album. And then runs out while Yana's like, get out of my house! Yeah, exactly. That's it. Uh, we've got we've solved both of those issues there. Mh, yep. good job, everyone. Nailed. Nailed. Yep. Okay. So Atahan, 
Adahan loves loves giving us a load of questions, which we love. Thanks, Adahan. Uh, yeah, so you. for Conrad, uh, who do you think Erna is in relation to everyone else? Um, is she important? Why do you think she takes in strays? Nice subtle use of the word relation there, Atahan. <laughs> well, yeah. So the I feel like someone's finding. I, I, that's an interesting question. It's slightly leading, actually. But I wonder. It, 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 the implication with Noah and Agnes is that you know Adam finds them young and kind of indoctrinates them, and obviously with Helga, uh, Helga as well. So yeah, I guess maybe she could be kind of like the front for this sinister operation that's like finding young vulnerable people and, and recruiting them into, into sick Mondas. Okay. Interesting. Or maybe uh, she's just a bartender. Yes. Yeah, she's just a bartender who just happens to have rooms upstairs. Yeah. She wouldn't see chambers stuff. upstairs. Yeah. yeah. Chambers upstairs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not even <laughs> that she's helping them. Who knows what she's doing in there? Um, so what do you think is Adam's ultimate goal? How does this, how does this differ from Claudia's? I, so I think he, we know he's trying to preserve something and I don't know whether we can trust Adam, but, oh wait, sorry, was the question Noah's ultimate goal or Adam's ultimate goal? Adam's. Oh, Adam's, yeah. So we know, we know he wants to preserve the timeline and the question then becomes, well, why? So everyone in Sigmunda seems to believe that there's a paradise awaiting them. Now it's, it's possible that Adam is lying to them just to get them to do his bidding. That certainly seems plausible. But to me, I feel like Adam wouldn't be as devoted to the idea uh, of preserving the timeline if all he was trying to do was end everything, which seems like what his dialogue is suggesting. So uh, to me, there, there must be something at the end. There must be some kind of paradise at the end of time that, that he is striving to achieve. And, and that's, that's his end goal is to go through these cycles, preserve, um, preserve the end of time until the next one begins and then, and then go again. Interesting. Do you think Jonas will trust Adam going forward, knowing that he is him? Uh, and if so, why? Mm. No, I don't think so. Cause he's so obviously corrupted you know, like Stranger Jonas seems at least vaguely trustworthy. Whereas, like, he, we already know that Jonas doesn't trust Noah because Noah has kidnapped him at least once, and um, Adam is in is in cahoots with him. So I don't really see any reason for Jonas to trust Adam. Me, you know, maybe he doesn't even initially believe that Adam is actually him. You know, plenty of people have neck scars. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't think he will trust him. Okay. Uh, at this point, the only adults in 2020 who don't know about time travel are Klaus and uh, Torben, Benny, Regina, um, and Yasin slash Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> yep, thank you. Um, Is how that actually you... in the question? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep it alive. Keep it alive. Uh, so how do you think um, that they'll find out about it or will they? I don't think they will. I, I think we've seen their graves and I, I think Regina and Alexander are definitely going to die in the apocalypse uh, and Vola for that matter. Um, I'm not sure about Benny. To be honest, I hadn't thought about Benny that much. Um, I wonder, I wonder what will happen with Benny. I, I think Benny, if, if Torben's dying, it feels like Benny might die as well because, because they're quite a, they feel like quite a supplemental character at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely think there is a significance to the characters that now know about time travel compared to those that don't. Uh, when you look at the graves that we've seen in 2052. Okay, awesome. And out of hands, last question is for me. On a scale of one to ten, how relieved were you that you could finally stop hiding the fact that you, Adam was Jonas? I know <laughs> that when I watched it with my friend, I was so I was joyous that I could finally talk about Adam as older Jonas and not just as the mob leader of this secret organization. Uh, I was very, very happy. And I said that to uh, Conrad before we started re recording today because um, it's, yeah, I'm just, that is another big one where I'm just like, I could have slipped on that, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. I know we do have another name. Like, for the stranger, we don't have a name except for the stranger. So that was a little harder to not slip on, to be honest with you. But we, yeah. we actually had, for Adam, we have a name. Um, 
I like the idea that he goes by Adam, but it's still Jonas because when you when you think of Adam, you don't think of calling him Jonas, but that is his name, and it's the same. It's the same guy. So, um, yeah, I was really happy to uh, have Conrad uh, finally get to that. Uh, probably as well, I'm even more happy because he actually guessed it right in episode one. So if he hadn't have guessed it, then I probably wouldn't have really cared because I would have been I would have I would have been enjoying the the ride of him not knowing what was going on. But because yeah. he already, he already knew it, and I just couldn't say anything about the fact that he knew it. That's what was hard about this one. I I mean to be honest, I, I didn't think we were as I've said in the main episode, I didn't think we were going to get that as early as we did either. So I'm pleased as well because now now I, like I get the confirmation way earlier than I thought I was going to. Yeah, and I said to Conrad as well this earlier before we started recording. I think the show gave you like one or two chances to get this one. They only yeah. gave you one or two chances before episode four to even get this. And Conrad picked up on the first clue they gave him and he got it right straight away. So yeah, that's, I'm, I was quite pleased with myself for that, if I'm honest. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. So next question from Adam McCready. And Adam says, now that it's been established that you've got a main group of people who use time travel on the regular, does Conrad think that any other characters outside that group will time travel in the coming episodes slash season three? Um, and where might they end up? What's outside of Sigmundus? Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah, I mean, I think the whole, I think the whole gang's getting into it. Like, so, like Do- the Doppler family, Hannah, Katerina. I feel like they're all, they're all gonna go off and do some stuff, and then, and then the kids are gonna go off and do stuff as well. I think so. Really, <laughs> in in my head, when the apocalypse happens, it's just gonna be Alexander and Regina sat at home being like where is everyone and then and then and then, and then there's gonna be like a mushroom cloud and then, <laughs> and then it's, it's very quiet at the shop today yeah, yeah. it's just like they you can just hear like a dog barking in the distance and that's it uh and it'll be gretchen um <laughs> yeah, yeah I, so i think they're all doing it i think they're all up to it um I, I usually keep my fan theories for the end of the season when we're sort of going through what fans thought but yeah. I, w- I will say that a big fan theory was that Gretchen was Adam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he that's, is horribly scarred. You can't tell. Yeah, that's one of the big... That, that, that was the biggest meme theory going around. <laughs> <laughs> how, did it, how else did, it, did Gretchen open the door? Claudia claimed she did it, but I don't believe her. No, no, you can't believe a word comes out of her mouth. Um, <laughs> all right, next question. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Next question from Ouroboros. Um, how reliable does Conrad think the method of uh, identifying yourself by showing a scar is? Because it happened twice now and there could be other people with the next scar. Um, one of my, fav- my crazy theories back in the day was that Adam might be Michael, who we didn't actually see die because the camera zoomed in on, sorry, I've cut out some of that, que- but the camera zoomed in on uh, the picture. Um, so mm. he was sort of just writhing about. So interesting theory. What do you think about the fact that they sort of have done that a few times uh, that, and more than one person could have the same scar. Yeah, I mean, I think the reveal of the scar is almost more for the audience's benefit than for Jonas's. Uh, you know, I think the implication of the conversation that that Jonas and Adam have before that reveal is what is kind of cluing Jonas in that this is himself. You know, the whole "oh, don't you know who I am?" kind of thing. And I guess, I guess also, you have to kind of of um Occam's razor it and be like well what what is the benefit of of um of Adam lying about himself being Jonas here and actually to be honest there are there are benefits like to him lying he could you know potentially manipulate Jonas more easily if Jonas believes that this is someone that he's going to become but at the same time it could also make it much harder to manipulate him because he'll like rail against the inevitability of his own fate, which certainly seems in character for Jonas. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's one hundred percent reliable, um, but I think it it kind of works as a as a like a visual touchstone, I guess, for for a big plot reveal. Awesome. Okay, next question from Marcy seven four seven for Conrad. In season one, you created a whole theory about Marta Ulrich based on the Ariadne and the Minotaur. Can yeah. you can you do the same with the biblical stories of Adam and Noah? Why the biblical names? Do you think that other characters' names in the Bible will appear in the show? You have already done this. Yeah, so I've I've started I've gone on a on a big old dive on this episode on this kind of <laughs> stuff. So I mean, you know, Adam obviously is the 
progenitor of the the the, the Sigmundus cult, uh, I guess. Cult, cult is what I meant to say there. Um, and uh, Noah is, if if my theory about there being a kind of paradise after the apocalypse um, that they're being led to, then Noah is as I said, in, I guess the first season, he's kind of like the muscle who gets things done to get them there. You know, he, he's, he's building the boat to take them there. Um, and I think there's probably going to be an Eve. Um, I don't know who it's going to be yet. My, I, I guess maybe it could have been Claudia. Um, though that, how we get from where Claudia is now to her being a kind of figure at the, at the, at the left hand of, of Adam in like a paradise seems like a, a big leap for her character, but I suppose you never know. Um, but yeah, I, I think we will get more um, biblical characters. I certainly expect there to be an Eve who turns up um, okay. or well, maybe not a character who is literally called Eve, but a reference to someone who is like the female companion to Adam who is you okay. know, positioned as the Eve. Interesting. All right. Awesome. Uh, next question comes from Artifacts Entertainment. And uh, it says, hi, I'm Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Hello. Uh, uh, L- Lauren says, first time commenter, long time listener on Ad- Apple Podcasts. Conrad, I think we've officially made it. We've done it. Someone said, first time commenter, long time listener. Oh, amazing. I've, been, I've waited to hear those words for so long, Lauren. Yeah. And, and here we are. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're official now. Um, I have to ask, what do you think of the symbolism of Noah and the knife? Uh, cutting the apple, now trimming his nails. Whatever conversation he's having, the camera and whoever is talking seem to be to fixate on it. Uh, is it just implying a threatening presence or something deeper? Uh, I think it's. I think it is partially that. I think you know the apple um, is is a symbol of the Garden of Eden and you know the the, the, the fruit that tempted man to leave the Garden of, Garden of Eden. Um, and uh, even though like it's never actually described it's always in, in most media an apple is what is depicted um so that you know there's obviously that and he has he as a character is trying to take people back to a paradise maybe it's you know a, a literal garden of eden maybe it's something a bit more um a bit more sort of down to earth than that but but still you know potentially something you could regard as a as a paradise in comparison to the post apocalypse uh, elliptic landscape post-apocalyptic landscape in 1952 um and the knife i think you've nailed it i think it's just violence you know Noah is a mm. Noah is a man who is capable of extreme violence um and will do what he needs to do to get the job done um i think the most interesting thing about noah's character going into the second half of season two and hopefully season three is that we know he is a character who will do anything he needs to to achieve his ends but what are his ends going to be going forward because he seems to there are there are fracture uh, fractures in his relationship with uh, with adam so um yeah I, th- I think that's i think that's the the symbolism and the significance of the apple and the knife uh and I, i'm really interested to see what it means for him going forward awesome uh okay so thanks lauren next question comes from bill and bill says what are the embarrassing circumstances around voller's eye finish his story <laughs> He said, my original theory was at the time that he had a drunken night out in a German pool hall and involved an appointment, uh, an appointment with a, with either a cue stick or a darts game that ended badly. <laughs> I like both of those. All right, yeah, be- I could, I could buy those. Before you go on, uh, I will say in the lead up to season three coming out, I, uh, my, my friend told me that I should um, make a video about uh about like just like top like 10 the top 10 things that could have happened to to torben's eye and just like make up complete nonsense you know like like stuff like he's traveling through time and everything you know but uh so i still might make that video just just for a laugh but uh but i thought that was pretty funny uh so what do you think conrad what's your craziest way you think that um, well, on the main episode, I suggested I still think it's a bird attack that did it. Yeah, so yeah. perhaps perhaps he got really into like hawking or um, or you know training pigeons because there's probably a fair few pigeons. Well, we know there's a load of them, or there were before uh, people started going through the bloody uh, tunnel. Uh, yeah. A bunch of pigeons in um, in Vinden, and one was a little bit unruly and attacked him. Um, I, he also seems like the kind of character 
who when they're working at the police station if like uh, you know one of the letters fell off the sign out front he would be the one that they made fix it because he's he, you know he's no use as a police officer so he might as well <laughs> do some handiwork and perhaps uh you know the eye fell off and he was reattaching yeah. it but he'd only got like one of the screws in so it was kind of on a hinge and as he was trying to get the next one in it kind of swung around and struck him in the in the eye which would be very <laughs> ironic um so that's that's a potential potential theory as well uh i hope we never find out okay okay uh, yeah, the theory that I think happened is, uh, <laughs> oh, this is so silly. The idea, the idea of going through to- how, what happened to Torben's eye. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's important. It's, it's the main it's thing important. about his character at the moment. Yeah, it's important stuff. Um, yeah, so to- I, ha- I had a really good one in my mind there, but I can't remember. So we might, <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember it like five comments in the future and then I'll just like talk about it. All right, we'll have, a, we'll, have a safe word. we'll have a safe word where you can just interrupt me to say it. So, um, it, 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 yeah, just Torben's eye, and then I'll stop whatever I'm doing. Okay, I can't remember, but uh, yeah. So, well, that's why you have the safe word. You just good, this me is the good, good, this is the good quality content. This see this brain, <laughs> yeah. see this brain of mine. This is what you guys subscribe for. So, it's let me down. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Anyway, so next comment. Uh, thanks very much, Bill. I'm sure a lot of people could put their their funny ideas in the comments. What What do you think that uh, happened to Torben's eye? Yeah, I can't um, wait to hear them. So, uh, Milos Vitten says, Satnam, guys. Uh, question for both. Do you like the band Tool? Anthony, if yes, do you see some connections with our dear show Dark um, with Tool's music slash lyrics theme and theme? Do you know the band Tool, Conrad? Um, I know bits and pieces of them. I had, um, I had uh, there was a it? song called Schism. There is schisms, probably their most famous famous song, yeah. but they have uh, Parabola and Parabola on that same album, Parabola, which are very yeah. very good. Um, those are really the only songs I know by them, though. Uh, but they're very good. I have some friends who are very into Tool um, uh, and and math rocky kind of stuff like that. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, uh, Milos, I, I don't think I can give you what you want. I'm I'm I'm, I'm... I'm I'm very aware of Tool. I know a few of their songs. I've never really delved into the lyrics too much. Um, I actually know them through my brother-in-law, who is a musician himself, and uh, he's really, really big fan of Tool. Uh, he's actually met them and everything. He's I think his his friend, uh, his friend's dad. Forget forgive the degrees of separation here, but his friend's dad is actually like the. He he ha- he runs like a really big Tool fan club page for Ireland on on Facebook, and so therefore like whenever Tool comes to to uh, to play shows in Ireland, uh, my brother in law's friend's dad again through his separation, he will actually <laughs> pick them up from the airport and stuff and take them to the gig and stuff because they've they've become friends over the years. But I've never met them. I've only listened to a few of their songs. If I really should get my brother-in-law on the episode uh, on the show one day to talk about Tool, maybe I'll get him on an episode. Of, if you think that there are if there are parallels between Tool's music and and Dark, then maybe that's a Dark Discussions episode. Maybe I could that get my like yeah, maybe I could get my brother-in-law on and he could talk about all the all the connections. Uh, so that'd be cool. Yeah. So next one comes from. <laughs> that was great. I thought you were going to jump in. I thought that was you were a gonna... neat segue. I thought about it and I was like, no, hey, you know what? I'm gonna leave it blank. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make Anthony look like an absolute fool here. <laughs> That's all right. Never worry. Never worry. The funny thing is, we're obviously this is a podcast we recorded in uh, we recorded in uh, in advance, but I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Is it I laziness wanna... or is it candor? I don't know. We're honest with you, dear fans. We don't want you to. We don't want to lie to you and make you think that we're we're better at this than we are. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're along the journey with us. Like we're learning yeah. as we go. <laughs> All right. So the next question comes from the one, two, three Christian. Um, oh, that's a great name. Is that, I mean, I'm guessing that's a Sean Waltman reference. I'm sure it is. Uh, <laughs> the one, two, three kid. Um, They're going to become cross pack later in their, <laughs> later in their life. <laughs> this is a real, that's a deep cut. I'm sorry. I'm full of these this episode. Ex Tina Aguilera. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that's that's actually really interesting. I really wonder if that is an X Pac reference. I hope that's an X Pac reference. Sean Waltman, if, get in if, touch. If it's not, and it's just generally like you know a religious Christian, I'm sorry about our conversation <laughs> in, in the last episode. Um, we respect your we respect you being a fan. Uh, okay, so question for Conrad: Any idea what the HG in HG Townhouse stands for? Well, that's a good question. Homegrown. I don't know. Yeah, homegrown. Um, <laughs> 
I mean, it, it's got to be a reference to the to the time machine, right? So, what's H.G. Wells' name? Is it Herbert Godfrey? I think was was um, was uh, H.G. Wells' first and second name. So I guess that. But I mean, they're not they're not they're not particularly Herbert's not a particularly German name. Um, so maybe it's some sort of Hans. Germanic Hans. <laughs> Go for the most stereotypical German name we can possibly think of. Um, Hans Gruber Tannhaus. Yeah, Hans Gruber Tannhaus. There we go. Done. Nailed it in one. Next question. Yeah. All right. <laughs> was he even German? Was Hans Gruber German or was he Austrian? I, I was about to go on to the next question. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was literally just going to go on. You can't do it. Yeah. Uh, what are your favorite uses of symbol? This is from Jamie Jet. What are your favorite uses of symbolism in the show so far? It can be religious symbolism or the Ariadne of the Minotaur, for example. So, what's your favorite uses of symbolism so far? Oh, that's that's quite tough. What like literal symbolism? Yeah, like you know, Adam's like Uncle Festa. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're only saying that. Okay, so we have to bring the listeners in on this as well because they're not going to understand. So, listeners. Anthony watched Adam's Family Values a few, <laughs> like about a week ago, and we talked about it. I actually watched it the other day as well. It's and that's so good. Why, and that's why Anthony is mentioning Uncle Vesta. <laughs> so, it's a bomb. Uh, it, is, it, is it is a good movie. I've forgotten how funny it is. Yeah. Um, is Adam Uncle Vesta? Yeah, sure. Okay. Who's the Gomez Adams? That's the real, that's what I want to know. Or who's the Pro- real Tisha? Probably Agnes. Agnes. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird, isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't really work. In many ways, it's a foolish comparison. Who's Pugsley? Um, <laughs> Pugsley's definitely young now. He's Alexander, a bruiser. Alexander, probably. Or Alexander, yeah, it could be yeah, Pugsley. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I can't remember the question. Symbolism. Uh, this is a very favorite, silly episode. Favorite type of symbolism. Uh, what's? I'm trying to think of any that's really stood out to me. I quite like the Ouroboros. Um, uh, snake rings in the cave would, that link the Ariadne's thread. There, there's kind of a, it's not, it's it's um, just a sort of little visual. It's not even really symbolism because it's a literal, it's a literal thing from mythology. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 not a, quite a nice. It, it doesn't sort of beat you over the head with it. It's just there. And if you know what Ouroboros is, it's cool. And if not, it's just a snake thing that they loop the red thread through. So maybe that. Okay. Cool. Fair enough. Um, to me at this stage, I don't know, like just to mention something different, I suppose I really like the eighties, uh, eighties horror themes throughout the show. Um, yeah. you know, that, and there's a lot of symbolism in that, uh, you know, that's not, again, not really symbolism, but it's, it's very, it's a lot of allusions to that. So just, just to mention something different, I'll say that as well. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. All right. So, um, next one comes from Annie Mal again, great name, great name. Uh, yep. so for Conrad. Clausen seems to have a personal agenda that he prioritizes over his official assignment. Any mm. thought on what he's up to? Well, I definitely think he has an ulterior motive. I feel like he, you know, he volunteered for this task force. Um, and he seems, he just, he seems a bit Machiavellian to me. Like he seems like he, he knows a lot more than he's letting on and certainly a lot more than he's letting Charlotte and, uh, and the other cops in Vinden uh, see. So, why does he have a vested interest in exposing the lies in Vinden? I, and my, my guess would be because they cost him something. Um, what that is, I'm not really sure at the moment. I, I don't think, I don't think he's a time traveler. I don't think he's from another, another time. Um, but I do believe that he might have some kind of history uh, with someone in Vinden that we're yet to find out about. Okay. Interesting. Um, all right. So the next question, I don't want you to answer it straight away. It's for both of us, but I've, okay. I've thought of a little, um, a little bit that I'm going to do, right? Just like, okay. just like your Adam bit in the last uh, episode. Yeah. Perfect. So I'll tell you how to settle up and then <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Let, let me swing for the fences, right? This is how all good jokes are made. So the question is, Vola says no one understood why Hannah married Michael. Why do you think she cho- uh, chose to be with him? Do you ever think she suspected anything about his background? So what I want you to do is, I'm going to be Hannah. You're going to be Michael. Right. You know, after a few years of their marriage, Michael sort of is, you know, he's maybe he's starting to get a bit down. I don't know what he's, he's sort of maybe remembering some of his childhood and he thinks to himself, you know, why is this wonderful woman with me? You know? And he's like, you know, 
and, and I want you to ask me then, I'm, I'm Hannah, right? You want to say, why are you with me? Right? Say that to me. Okay. Hannah, I love you, but why are you with me? Du bist cool. <laughs> Uh, I feel like she wouldn't even say that to like a 40 year old <laughs> Michael either. Like what is cool to a 12 year old is how do you very say, different. How do you say you were cool? Uh, or oh, du var cool, I think. Yeah, well, that's, nah. probably, that's probably it then. Um, that I probably got that completely wrong. I apologize to our German speaking listeners there. Um, you didn't, you didn't give me enough time to uh, Google the uh, Google the <laughs> translation and claim it. Um, we already know that Google Translate doesn't work anyway. So yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I, d- I don't know why they ended up together. Like it's odd. It is an odd pairing. I feel like it's just two people who gravitated towards each other for lack of a better option. Yeah, possibly. Honestly. Like I mean, um, not to say there was. They, I'm sure there was affection between them. I think when Hannah sees Young Mickle. Um, uh, when stranger takes her back there is obvious emotional there is an obvious like emotional connection and affection there but i don't think it i think it's something that grew over time i don't think there was you know i don't think it's who she saw herself uh you know spending the rest of her life with to be honest yeah but but also the fact is as well like the first time they met each other it's not like torben was sitting there looking at them like he didn't know what their relationship was so like they, they had this private relationship outside of school it might be one of those things like even like i think there's a moment where at the, at the beginning of this when mickle's walking into the school and like katarina blows past him not really knocks him over and then hannah turns around and is, is looking at him like sort of you know sweetly and then Katarina's like come on hannah so i think that maybe there was a sort of uh, situation going on where they they really hung around outside school and got to know but in school hannah was like you don't talk to me you don't go anywhere near me <laughs> yeah i don't need you bringing down my rep yeah so uh I've also new kid who wears hot pants yeah so the second the second part of the question says um do you think hannah ever suspected anything about um mickle's past mm, i find it very hard to believe that he kept it a secret for 30 years she must have known something even if even if it wasn't like fully confirmed i feel like there's no way he went 30 years without at least a hint that he might be from somewhere else yeah maybe just even yeah obviously a different town she probably knew that anyway yeah i mean at some point he's gonna have to accept that he is stuck in the 80s i guess because we know that he grows up there um so you know he has to just make the best of that situation but i i feel like he's never gonna fully leave it yeah, and you've also got Enos like sort of drugging him as well. well yeah, that's gonna help. He's drugging him. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna help with him not talking about it. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so thanks very much, um, Animal. So the next question is from AK. I probably should have asked this question after season one, but I still think it's val- a valuable one. So when Jonas arrives in 2052 for the first time, the girl with the scar, and I'm I'm loving the f- the, the, the the commenters' participation today because they put in brackets Marta. <laughs> said, nice, thank you very much says welcome to the future but you can only say that to that to someone who you know has come from the past Uh because you can only talk about the future referring to the other timeline right so how Uh does how does she know that Jonas has come from the past if they never met before hope this was quite understandable it was very understandable it's because i have met before because she's his kid like she (laughs) like well like even to be honest even if she doesn't end up being his kid and that theory ends up being wrong they they definitely know Jonas already. You know, there's that whole thing between Ellie and um, and Jonas and her when they're they're threatening to hang him, where they talk about the rules not applying to him, and they talk to him as if they have a, a an existing relationship, which they they simply don't have based on what we've seen between Jonas and those characters so far. So Jonas Jonas will go back to the future. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that at some point, and. Um, and will form more of a relationship with those guys and they will know that he is he is coming and so that's why they act with some familiarity when they see him again and say you know welcome to the future yeah and even at that even if this uh the young woman who you say is martyr (laughs) even if even if she you know didn't know (laughs) Jonas personally or didn't know anything about Jonas like Elizabeth surely did and it's, yeah. it's very much implied Elizabeth is like the leader so Elizabeth has basically said to that woman uh you know this fella's coming from the past go on, go and say welcome to the future to him <laughs> yeah exactly and and you know yeah like say something cool to him when he turns up that we could end a tv series with um 
it's it, he's also like she wouldn't be the first person who uh knows who know, uh who Jonas is uh when he turns up in a new time you know like Noah knew the exact same thing oh young Noah knew the exact same thing when he turns up in the 20s you know that like people are expecting him in various different places so it's not it's not um that's not a new thing awesome uh yeah okay so last question well it's not okay. even really it's it is a question but it's not even really a question but uh comes from rebecca and rebecca asks you thought season two episode three was the saddest episode so far that's a rhetorical <laughs> question oh, she boy. then goes on to say <laughs> oh, honey Christ. you've got a storm coming big storm coming i i'm i There's believe a storm that coming mr conrad <laughs> 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 I, I believe that 100 i think i if if yeah if my time timeline is correct i think episode six might be a might be a rough one for old conrad because i like egon and i don't want to see him die in a really sad way and i think he might so yeah check back in if you want to hear me be very upset about about that episode yeah well, egon's great like we can all agree on that um and we know that he dies at some point. So unless unless it changes, because you know yeah. you said you said that maybe this uh, Claudia is on a different path. I do think that, but I think I'd be very surprised. I feel like this is the this is the kind of show that is going to keep its cards pretty close to its chest in terms of confirming or denying that characters can change the sort of preordained outcome of things um, until you know the moment where it becomes crucial and sort of the fate of the whole universe i guess or humanity rests upon the rests upon the outcome so i i, I don't see egon being the moment where they confirm that that things can change uh, i'd love to be wrong i'd love for noah to get a happy ending but i just don't see it for him why, why would a character who has had nothing but bad things happen to him get any kind of happy ending it's not to say he doesn't deserve one because he definitely does but yeah, I, th- I think I think Egon's ending is going to be a rough one. Okay, awesome. And also, we know that like when when all just like just like Claudia, when uh, if when and if old Egon bites the dust, it doesn't mean that the character of Egon is gone from the show. So, no, exactly. You know, we still still got young Egon. Like we, you know, we can always uh, we'll always have young Egon. Yeah. Um, that was my Humphrey Bogart in Casablanca impersonation, and it was <laughs> bad. Um, I've never tried it before. I went for it without full confidence in it, and unfortunately, well, you can see the results. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, so I hope we'll we'll still get some young Egon. Um, I hope. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. So that's the episode this week for the question and answers. If you've got uh, any questions for episode six, leave it on the one on Monday because obviously we've already recorded the one for episode five. Thanks very much. Um, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you subscribe on podcasting apps. Thanks very much to was it Lauren who came over from the podcasting apps to ask questions. Anyone who's listening to us on podcasting apps, feel free. The YouTube uh, community is very nice on my channel. Don't know what I did to deserve that, but they are. So go, <laughs> come over and have a chat in the, in the YouTube comments and that'll be great. Apart from that, I think we're ready to go. Anything to add lastly, Conrad, today? But just thank you for all, all the questions. It continues to be uh, an illuminating experience. And sorry for all the bad jokes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened to us in this episode. We just it just it kind of went off the rails a bit. But you know, or, or if you enjoyed them, you're welcome for the good jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do this cool. Uh, yeah, okay. Delete, delete as appropriate. Delete as appropriate. Okay. Anyway, guys, that's us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the After Dark Podcast. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode.